Hello, my name is Jill Barry Bowen, CEO of Northwestern Medical Center and your host of the NMC Health Beat Show, dedicated to discussing important healthcare topics of interest to our community. Today I'm joined by Dr. Simon Shapiro. He's an osteopathic physician who joined Northwestern Orthopedics in August. So Dr. Shapiro, we are grateful um, to have you here in this community. So it's uh, been a long time coming and so thank you first and foremost for for joining our team in this community. Thank you. Yeah. So maybe starting off um, to tell everyone a little bit about your background, what your educational background is, a little bit about yourself, that would be a great place to start. Sure. Well, um, originally I was a music major. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but eventually worked my way into cultural anthropology. Uh, always being very interested in people and um, through that experience and some uh, travels um, and an exp uh, interest in uh, traditional East Asian philosophy I developed an interest in uh, traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture mm -hmm. and um, so that's my original end to the medical system and originally, uh, it was really just a personal interest, and I studied uh, Tai Chi and yoga mm -hmm. and meditation. And what I found was that I was really a novice at some, at some very basic things, like breathing and moving mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. And uh, so I, I decided to undertake a a more formal study of that and that led me to traditional Chinese medicine which includes uh, the discipline of acupuncture um, and a lot of what we would call now lifestyle medicine approaches mm -hmm. and um, so that's what I did originally and I was in private practice doing that uh, for several years mm -hmm. and um, at a certain point I felt somewhat limited by that and I wanted to be able to offer uh, other um, modalities and therapies to my patients and I also wanted to know more mm -hmm. and that led me to uh, go to medical school and the rest is history. <laughs> so but you uh, actually trained in like sports medicine as well so and you got your fellowship in interventional pain so yeah you really got uh, you've done a lot in your preparation. Yeah, my, my residency training is in physical medicine and rehabilitation, or PM&R, mm -hmm. uh, which is an area of medicine that is um, focused on optimizing function uh, within the limitations of whatever a person's condition may be. Uh, the most common patients that we see in that field are people with stroke and spinal cord injury and traumatic brain injury. Um, but in reality, we see everything from a sprained ankle, you know, on up mm -hmm. to uh, someone who is uh, quadriplegic in a wheelchair. And then you say, well, within these limitations, how can we optimize this, this patient's function and help them achieve their goals? In uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation, you do that uh, typically with a team of therapists, including physical therapy and occupational therapy and, and so on. Um, but also with uh, interventional modalities such as injections. And uh, so in my fellowship training, which it was in interventional spine and sports medicine, um, it really emphasized that aspect of the training mm -hmm. and um, added new skills to you know, my repertoire. Um, so I went from doing acupuncture, which is a needle-based mm -hmm. uh, procedure, um, and I think it was a natural progression to uh, learn more advanced um, minimally invasive uh, techniques to help people optimize function and decrease pain. So with all of that background, what is your practice at Northwestern Orthopedics? That's where you're located with, uh, in the orthopedic practice. So, and then you've moved to, um, you were hired as interventional pain. So what does your practice look like? So yeah, I serve as the interventional pain physician in the orthopedic practice. Um, I'm not an orthopedic surgeon, um, so I do non-surgical, minimally invasive uh, techniques. Um, but really my role is to uh, help patients who uh, have some pain that is limiting function, 
um, through uh, the full spectrum of conservative modalities, which um, includes uh, some types of medication management, um, uh, some very specific uh, exercise and uh, physical therapy type prescription. Um, I emphasize a lot of lifestyle uh, things when that's possible. Mm -hmm. And um, right on up to the injections, um, which includes a wide variety of injections and locations, um, and, as well as some other uh, types of needle-based, minimally invasive procedures. So um, what would you describe to the community as when to call you? What, what would they be experiencing that you might be able to help them with? Uh, usually it's, a, it's an acute uh, flare-up of pain that's not resolving uh, through more conservative measures, including just time. Many times, you know, pain will resolve over, over time. Mm -hmm. um, typically, there's, a, uh, there's an initial set of things that n normally your doctor would take care of. Um, a lot of times, people who come to see me have already been through that, and those things didn't work. And um, so we're kind of on to phase two, and let's get more aggressive about this, or let's take another look at it and, and say, what, has anything um, been missed that we should try uh, before we move on to an injection? Certainly, um, if I see somebody and I think an injection is not going to help them, they really need a surgery mm -hmm. or something else, then my role is to coordinate that care and make sure they get to where they need to be. Um, some patients are trying to avoid having a surgery. Mm -hmm. And sure. there's a role for what I do there just to prevent and hold off on, on having a surgery um, or just postpone a surgery. Some people say, well, I, I know I need to get this surgery done. Let's say it's a hip replacement. Um, but I don't really have the time and uh, energy to go through that process yeah. until you know, a year from now or something like that. And so what we do until then is we, you know, we try to manage that pain a little better for them mm -hmm. um, until they uh, can do what they need to do in that regard. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the uh, most common intervention that you do and, and, uh, and what is it done for? Probably the most common uh, procedure uh, that I do is uh, the epidural steroid injection, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, um, it's an image-guided procedure. In other words, I use a, a special x-ray tool called a fluoroscope, um, which rotates around the patient uh, as we're doing the procedure so that I can uh, get um, multiple different angles and images mm -hmm. and triangulate so we know exactly where we're going. Uh, because the epidural space is uh, a tiny little space right near, you know, these nerves which we think are getting pinched. The classic type of case is people call sciatica. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. typically uh, people will have back pain and it's shooting down their leg. That's, that's, a, that's the most common procedure that I do. There's okay. different types of epidurals. There's mm -hmm. different levels where you could uh, place the uh, injection. Um, but... Uh, in a nutshell, that's the most common one, and, and typically it's, it's due to uh, pain, low back pain that's shooting down your leg, okay. um, and, uh, and it's not going away on its own. Mm -hmm. So when you do a procedure like that, is it, is it accompanied by uh, physical therapy or other, like you said, lifestyle changes? What, what might be um, a plan for that patient? Definitely. There's some conservative things that I would do prior to um, suggesting an, an epidural. One of which is, is, is uh, if, if, if it's tolerable, just give it some time. Because mm -hmm. frequently that type of thing will resolve on its own. But there's certain medications that we certainly can try, um, anti-inflammatory medications and that sort of thing. Uh, physical therapy, in my opinion, is always part of the uh, program, um, whether it, it's up front because that's the thing that's going to help move you forward, mm -hmm. or it's after we give you some relief from the pain so uh, that you can you know, strengthen the surrounding structures and prevent the uh, frequency and severity of these types of pain flares from happening. Mm -hmm. So when you think about um, chronic pain, and I mean, you can't alleviate all pain, can you? I mean, so how successful? Um, can this be for an individual? I know it's hard to, to be specific on that, but is there hope with chronic pain that 
there might be some relief for the acute pain flare-ups? Uh, yes. It is hard to say, you know, make a generalization because every, every patient is unique and pain is a very subjective um, thing that people experience very individually. Um, when someone comes in, you know, there's sort of three components to figuring out what do we need to do. There's listening to them mm -hmm. and, you know, interviewing them and hearing the background. Um, there's uh, physically examining the patient, which is very important uh, a part of the process. And then uh, correlating those things with diagnostic studies like imaging, like x-rays or MRIs when appropriate, when necessary. And um, once we look at that, um, those things um, together, then we can kind of decide, you know, what's going to be uh, the biggest bang for our buck, mm -hmm. what's going to be the most successful approach for us. Um, when you ask about uh, chronic pain, um, I don't think that the epidurals are a good treatment for chronic pain because mm -hmm. they, they don't, it's not that they're going to constantly uh, get rid of all your pain and you can come in every you know month and get an injection that that's generally not a good idea <laughs> we don't do that sure but um, people who have uh, who deal with I mean almost all of us deal with some aches and pains you know throughout mm -hmm. our life and um, but sometimes it gets really bad and it's really limiting us and we can't do the things that we really have to do and um, a lot of times that gets better on its own but sometimes it doesn't so I call that an acute flare of pain, and that's generally where these injections have a have a very good role. Right. Um, or, as I mentioned, when you know there's this underlying problem, um, you, there may be a surgical fix, but you want to avoid it, and that's understandable. And injections may help you uh, avoid that type of thing. Um, I, I think you said something very important, which is, you know, we we can't get rid of all pain. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. The goal. My goal is, is, to, is to relieve as much pain as we can, mm -hmm. to relieve as much suffering as we can, but really with an emphasis on uh, optimizing function. Exactly. And um, I think sometimes if we go into it and, and our goal is to eliminate 100% of pain, um, it's not realistic mm -hmm. and we're sort of setting ourselves up to be disappointed in, in that way. Yeah, maximizing function. I think that's yeah. right. And the activities of daily living, and hopefully Absolutely. To get them to the highest level of comfort yep. uh, possible. So, at the very beginning, we mentioned um, osteopathic physician versus MD. Is there really a difference with that? I mean, look at your background and your training; it's ex it's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, uh, there's a little bit of a difference. Um, some people make a lot of the difference between MDs and DOs. Um, I think we're really mostly the same in terms of our training. It's, mm -hmm. it's 90, 95 percent similar uh, in terms of what I learned in medical school and what an MD learns. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a DO, uh, doctor of osteopathy or osteopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. um, the, the difference is there's two sort of key differences. Uh, philosophically, osteopathic medicine emphasizes a holistic approach mm -hmm. to the patient. It's built into our curriculum. Um, and it always has been. I believe now there's a big push in, in uh, the traditional MD schools as well to do that. And so you see a lot of MDs with a very holistic approach. Um, and occasionally you see a DO who does not have one. So I don't think that the DOs have a, have a lock on uh, you know holistic approach to medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but it is built into our philosophy. And uh, the other component to osteopathic medicine is um, we all learn some manual therapy. It's called osteopathic manual medicine. Mm -hmm. It's an important part of osteopathic medicine, but some people really go on and they, and they subspecialize in that, and that's what they do, um, whereas many other uh, osteopathic physicians go on and specialize in things like family medicine or, in my case, physical medicine and rehabilitation and interventional pain medicine. So. Um, Nevertheless, even though I don't do that on, an, on a daily basis, I, I think it's an invaluable part of my training um, to understand the musculoskeletal, ne neuromusculoskeletal system in a hands-on mm -hmm. uh, type of way. And it does, it does help me, I find, in my, in my physical examination uh, and, and diagnostic approach. That's terrific. That's, um, that's wonderful. And I think that we are moving even to a more holistic approach and we think about lifestyle and behaviors and so I think it's very, very appropriate. Well, our time is uh, running out, but so where do we find you and, and can folks just call you at Northwestern Orthopedics and 
Um, how do folks uh, get to see you if they are having pain? Um, yeah, I'm at Northwestern Orthopedics, and um, it's, I think it's great to, to have a referral from someone who knows you and can uh, sort of uh, guide me in the right direction of you know what what has been done already, mm -hmm. um, but in some cases if that's not possible, I, you know you, you can come and see me directly, and we'll sit down and we'll look through the records and we'll figure that out together. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks for being on the on the show today. Thanks for finding Vermont. We're happy to have you uh, in our community serving this this population. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm Jill Bray Bowen, CEO of Northwestern Medical Center, and you're a host of the NMC Health Beat Show. And it's wonderful to have someone in the community that can help maximize your function. So if you're having pain, give Northwestern Orthopedics a call. Talk to your primary care provider because we want to get you back to the maximum wellness. Thank you for joining us.